Good day everyone, welcome back to the channel where massive moves have been made. Let's dive straight in as we take a look at rewards. Yes, I have a couple of rewards coming in. Let me quickly show you the teams that have won them for me. We have gotten ourselves 25th in Champion Europe Rare. And this wasn't a given. Alex Grimaldo was on the bench. They were 2-0 down. He came on, got two assists. Palacios was on the bench. He came on and got to a ridiculous 97.6 with 37.6 AA in those 62 minutes that he played. The guy is a monster. He clearly is the best card in my gallery right now. The one that I'm most excited about, personally speaking, the rare and the super rare. And then we also had Antoine Griezmann scoring against Inter and Vietz doing quite well. One more DA could have pushed us all the way up into podium, but that didn't happen and that's okay. In All-Star Rare Plus, as I said, Palacios is king and Mo Salah started in the game and got, uh, yeah, four goal contributions and I captained Joe Gomez. Don't ask why. <laughs> Please don't ask why. I clearly should have captained Salah. I thought he wasn't going to play. He's only going to come on as a sub. And I felt like Joe Gomez would play the entire game. And he only played 45 minutes in which he got 50 points. So if he continued to play, it could have been even better. But it is what it is. And that's the team that got me rewards. So let's dive straight in. Let's pick up the coins. The most important part of the reward section as always, as I'm opening mine, let me know your rewards in the comments down below, please, and how you won them, which division it was in as well. And let's see what else we get here. From Champion Europe Rare from the 25th position, we get ourselves a little bit of ETH, around 46 euros at the moment. Uh, tier 3 in Champion Europe Rare and a Tier 2 in All-Star Rare Plus. Here it is. What's it going to be? Tier 3, Brazil. Forward. Fulham. Rodrigo Moniz. Who are you and are you good, Rodrigo? I mean, I guess it's a good thing that he's a Premier League card. Oh, okay. All right. Now, that is interesting. The guy's on fire lately, and he never really played, and now only started playing for this side. Okay, that really is intriguing. He is doing well. That could potentially be a card to hold on to. I don't 23 until 2025. And him being a new season Prem card could be cool. Is he going to play next game? 90% expected to play against Spurs. That's a tough one, buddy. But it's nice to see that he actually has gone up a little bit in value there. And uh, there could be a sale coming up there. That could be quite useful. In Champion Europe Rare, we are looking at a card right here. I'm getting messages on my phone right now. Anyways, uh, Tier 2 Rare. This is the one where I'm hoping for something decent. Actually, this is All-Star Rare Plus, isn't it? French Mid. Stadrené, Buri Goat. Oh, how's he doing these days? I think it's the first time ever I've won a Buri Goat. He's doing all right, ain't he? He is doing all right. He has some decent points on him there. Obviously, maybe not as good as previously, that period right there. But uh, he seems to have kind of settled in again and doing quite well for Ren. Let me just quickly see, is he taking set pieces and stuff? Yes, he is, especially the last five games. Let's see how he's been doing. 17 corners have been taken by him. Free kicks, penalty. Ooh, he takes penalties as well. That could be a hold, you know. That could actually be a hold. Compared to Muniz, that could be a hold. Worth around 100 bucks. That's not bad. Okay, so both players together, around like, what, 180 euros? And then uh, also the ETH on top of it. We are looking at rewards around 200 euros. That is not bad at all. I got to say, though, because I'm so hell bent on having insane quality in my gallery, being realistic, I'm probably not going to keep any of these because I have a plan and I want to follow that plan. And now it's time to talk about that plan. A couple of you guys have already been sneaking into my gallery and looking at things in there. Let me show you what has changed with March 29th coming up where the new format is going to be coming in and the international football is going to be gone. I hate it. I'm so happy that it is going to be finished. And then the next time we have international football, it's going to be an actual tournament. That is going to be huge. But let's dive in and see what has happened here in the gallery. Let me go into see my cards. Super rare competition eligibility and then goalkeeper. Oh. Would you look at that? A cheeky little Manuel Noya. 
Super Rare is now in the gallery. I have traded out of all my Fine Ord cards. Yes, I have cut ties with Fine Ord. As much as it pains me, it has happened. Every single one of those Fine Ord cards that I had in my gallery has pretty much won as much as their own value into this gallery already. So that has been huge. I'm thankful for that period. And that's what Soraya also has to be about. Like, I don't have to make profit on these cards. If I'm only breaking even and having a great time watching them, that's a sick thing. That's amazing. And now I have traded every single one of them away to Puck Trader, who is an amazing guy, by the way. I have brought in Manuel Noya. Why did I want Manuel Noya? First of all, he's the best goalkeeper to ever step on a uh, foot onto the pitch. And also, in my opinion, he will play this season. He will play the Euros. And on top of it, he will play at least another full season with Bayern Munich. I do not see him stopping anytime soon. He hasn't indicated anything like that. And he has been all about basically saying that he loves the game too, too much to walk away from it. And there is zero reason for him to actually walk away. So that is a huge one. We now have Gaza from Girona and we have Manuel Noya as champion Europe goalkeepers in freaking super rare. I could have never dreamed of that previously. And then I brought in Militao. Yes, as you guys can see, Militao has joined in into the champion Europe super rare pieces here when it comes to defenders. For me, the reasoning behind Militao is he is the best center back at Real Madrid when he is healthy and fit he is clearly the best one in there so let's go ahead and take away these scores go Real Madrid only and you can just see 80s 70s 90s 80s 70s 90s everywhere and with Real Madrid bringing in an incredible amount of amazing players lately they only need to sort out their defense and Militao and Courtois have been training they are expected to start playing possibly again in April, which is mad because people thought Courtois wouldn't even make it into the Belgium uh, Euro. So that's going to be an interesting thing to follow. But Militao has been training again. He has uh, the uh, outlook of coming back at the beginning of April, which is exactly when we get the new competitions, basically. So that is perfect timing. I wanted to jump into this one before everyone starts picking up Militao again because he is going to be part of one of the most dominant sides for years to come, in my opinion. So I'm very excited about him. And I'm also excited about the prospect of Real Madrid bringing in another top quality centre-back to, center back to pair with him. So Militao is here. Noya, Militao, who else did your boy bring in? Well, he has gone in and gotten himself a dumb sub or slide. The Liverpool midfielder, the man with a rocket of a shot, has now walked into the club. I am so happy about this one because I truly believe that he is one for the future and one for the now. I, I love him. I love him. I didn't like him when he was at Leipzig. I never thought he was that great. But ever since he has come to Liverpool, I think he has been class. Every single interview I watch, every single thing he says, the way he plays... Everything has been so impressive and he has proven me completely wrong. And for that, I'm rewarding the man by bringing him into my gallery. Under 23 until 2025 as well, just in case I do want to play under 23 in a Super Rare in the next year, which is definitely something I might be interested in, uh, which was initially the plan, but I kind of moved away from it now because I want to really heavily focus on bringing in champion Europe quality. So Dominic Soboslai is here and he is... Part of the midfield section, which has some absolutely nutty players in there, obviously, with Alex Garcia, Julian Brandt, who's always decisive, capable, and now Ezequiel Palacios back from injury with a bang. The man comes up with 198, and before that, it was subbed games, and still, he did so freaking well. So, yeah, Palacios, I'm telling you right now, I think I tweeted it as well. If people... Like, if big clubs in Europe want to buy a player from Leverkusen, I think most scouts are advising them to go for Palacios over players like Grimaldo, over players like Florian Wirtz. There are many players of that sense that have similar qualities to them. But in my opinion, there is no one in European football. And I'm not saying this because I bought a Super Air. I was saying this before as well. In my opinion, there are maybe like four, three people 
in European football that can do offense and defense as well as he does and that read the game as perfectly as he does lately. His development has been unreal. If Xabi Alonso goes to a club, he surely has to have Palacios all the way high up on that list. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, Palacios at Bayern Munich would be nuts, honestly. Throw that trash bag Goretzka in there <laughs> into the deal. Send them the other way. Sorry, Quinny. <laughs> but let's go ahead and take a look at the forwards here because we also brought in another forward. I already had Boniface. I brought in Marcus Turam. I have Omar Marmouche, who has been killing it. We have Tsigankov, who has been really good, especially with his AA game. And whenever he gets a DA, he gets really high scores. But sadly, picked up an injury right now. But Gabriel Martinelli from Arsenal is now part of the club as well. Just like Dom Soboslai, he comes in with under 23 utility until 2025, keeping that, or, that door slightly open, but mainly for champion Europe Super Air. He is going to be a great piece to have. He recently picked up an injury in terms of like he had a cut on his foot, so he should be back in the next game, I fully assume, or the one after that for sure. So Martinelli is now part of the gallery, mainly because every single time I watched Arsenal in previous years, I always said Martinelli for me is that guy. That kid has potential to become something incredibly special, and he has proven over and over again that he can be that for Arsenal. And we can see that in some of his scores right here. Obviously not as consistent as some would like him to be, but he's still young. He's still learning on the job. And I still believe that he is going to be an incredible asset for Arsenal moving forward and also for our gallery. So looking at all that, the Feyenoord boys are gone on the 23 Super Airs. That just didn't really help me in any shape or form in any of the competitions I've played. I've been thrown into that deal as well. And I just made a clean cut. Champion Europe Super Air, here we go. So that is going to be quite fun. And that's not it, right? We also have the rare section, which I'm very excited about. Magnon, who got injured in the last game, but actually is fine. Uh, news have come out. Uh, he's going to be not playing this next game, but the one after that, he should be totally fine. Uh, Kelleha and Alisson for the Liverpool pair. Chevalier is an amazing goalkeeper, in my opinion. And Lille actually defend quite well in many games for him to keep clean sheets. Testegen at Barcelona. Once that defense settles in, I think he's going to be extremely good, as he has been many, many times already. And then we obviously have Noya in rare. Vertical stacking for the win. Laird will love that. And then, uh, yeah, the goalkeeper section is fine. I have a couple of players that I want to buy, which I will show you in just a second. I've actually come up with watch lists that I want to go after. Every single time I have ETH on the site and I can afford any of those players, I'm just going to bring them into the club. So looking at these players right here, uh, you can tell that we have the likes of Tomori, Theo Hernandez from AC Milan. We have Van Dijk, we have Trent, and also we have Grimaldo. Now, when it comes to Champion Europe defenders, there are not that many incredible ones out there in terms of their scores. I think I already have three of the best ones. I mean, if I look at the player rankings for Champion Europe defenders, I would assume that these guys are all like part of the top 10 probably. So let's go in there. Grimaldo at the top. Then you have Van Dijk at number five. And then Trent, if he wasn't injured, obviously would be way higher up here. But yeah, I, I feel like I already have some of the best. I mean, Theo Hernandez, as you saw there as well in the top 10. Schlotterbeck I have in super rare. So I already really genuinely feel like I have some of the best pieces in that part already. What I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to double up on them. I'm probably going to be buying another Van Dijk. I'm probably going to be buying another Trent Alexander-Arnold and possibly another Grimaldo because I don't necessarily see Leverkusen actually going ahead and accepting him to leave as well, as well as like Xabi Alonso and such. I can see Grimaldo sticking around at Leverkusen for a bit, uh, for at least one more season, and that should be quite good. But uh, going into the rest of the team here, into midfield, we have the likes of Rodrigo, Jude, Madison, Palacios, all absolute crushers and uh, players that I'm going to throw into those lineups. Obviously, Burigot is not going to be part of it. I really genuinely just want to have top, top, top players in here that I can always trust in. With players like Burigot, I mean, I'm calling him Burigot. I know it's like Burijo or something. Don't worry. I just don't have that safety. With Rodrigo, I know for a fact, whichever team I throw him in, I can expect at least a 55. And with players like Burijo, it's just not going to happen. So I want to have players in here that I feel comfortable with putting into any game, home, away, against anyone. That's the type of gallery I want to have, specifically in Champion Europe Rare, because it's going to, it's going to be so important 
And then in forwards, I feel like I have amazing players right now. We have Brian Diaz, who always steps in whenever Bellingham is injured. So that's a really good trade-off. Rafa Leao, who is in here because of what he can do for AC Milan. And he was part of teams that have done really well for me this weekend. Uh, Leroy Sané, once he picks up his form again, I think he's going to be on a vengeance mission now that he hasn't been included into the German national team. I feel bad for Darmstadt this upcoming weekend, so he's going to be probably crushing it. And then we have Vinicius Jr., Griezmann, Musiala, Salah, Vietz in forwards. I'm covered. I'm fine. But let's go into the watch lists. Here is the plan. Let's go into must buys that I have put in here. See more. So let's start off with goalkeepers. In terms of goalkeepers, players that I want to buy, Raya for sure, and Jan Zoma. Those are two players that I would love to save up for. I can't afford them even if I sell my rewards right now. But those are ones that I would really, really like to put into my gallery as soon as possible, specifically within April, if possible. And I'm going to say this right now. I'm not going to deposit anymore, uh, at least for now, because I've done so much. And I'm just going to let this plan play out because I feel like my gallery has never looked stronger. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep yielding, as I have been doing lately quite well. And I want to keep that going. So. These two are on my watch list right now. Vicario might go on there as well for future purposes. But then going into defense, there are a couple of pieces that I want. Specifically Romero. He's also part of that top 10. Joao Cancelo could be interesting, but I think he's going to go back to City after this one. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Matson is going to be a key one that I really want to bring in because in very dominant games for Dortmund, he is amazing and he's always 100 capable. Trent, I want another one. As I said before, Vimaldo, I want to get in. Van Dijk, I want to get in possibly as well. Branthwaite, I think, is one of the most exciting defenders in English football right now. So I think a super rare of his would be amazing for the gallery. So that's one I'm looking out for. And Kim Min Jae, if Alonso joins Bayern Munich, if they want to play three at the back, Kim Min Jae, De Ligt, Upamecano could be class. And Min Jae should never be on the bench for someone like Daya, anyways. And then going into the midfielders. Here are the must-buys in that section. I think AS Roma are, uh, can offer some great value to anyone's gallery. Uh, this is a card that I could easily buy. Pellegrini is uh, taking set pieces and stuff, I believe, but that could be a really good card to have. Not that high on my list, though, I must admit. The players that are very high on my list, probably the one at the highest position is Declan Rice. After that, I would say players like Gundogan, Saka, Xavi Simmons specifically going to PSG next season. I think he can dominate in uh, the French league in a big way, especially with Mbappe gone. There could be a lot of focus on him. Phil Foden is a great one as well to pair up with my Rodrigo, but uh, Pep Roulette really scares me. That one definitely has a question mark behind it. Uh, for the forwards, now that I have Martinelli, I can take him out of here. So that is beautiful. Let's take him out of there. Matis Tell is one for my heart, basically, uh, not necessarily for Soria purposes. Dybala is incredible. Nunez is great. I love him to death. I think he's amazing. Yamal is extremely high on my list. If I had to pick one player here, like if I had to make a top three, I would say Mbappe is not in there right now. I ideally want to get Mbappe throughout the summer if I can. Not right now because his situation at PSG scares me. Every single game week, it, it feels like he could be on the bench or only play 45 minutes. Haaland is not on there, even though I feel like he's great for getting decisives consistently. And I think in this last stretch of the season, he could be huge. But De Bruyne got injured again, so that is going to hurt his game once again. But Xing Min Son is definitely in that top three. Harry Kane is definitely in that top three for me. And then it would have to be Yamal. So those are the three that I really want to bring in up next if I can save up for them through rewards, which is definitely something that I can pull off with because we do have a great gallery in here. And especially with the new competitions, allowing three lineups to be thrown into Champion Europe Rare or specific divisions like Bundesliga, La Liga, Premier League, I believe it is. So those are going to be some that I definitely look at in the future and want to participate in. But I want to have focus heavily on Champion Europe Rare or Super Rare because you can now throw so many lineups in there. You can buy so many tickets to try and win the lottery in there. And that is very enticing to me. So I'd rather put all my tickets into those divisions rather than putting him to champion, challenger, and then contender and under 23 and all that. I want to focus on where my, strong, where my gallery is strong, strongest at already. And yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I've gone ahead and done this. Um, I genuinely do not care if anyone thinks I've put um, like wrong evaluations on my players or I overpaid or anything like that. 
I truly believe that once All Star is gone, which will last until August, a lot of the challenger and contender cards are going to keep dropping because people are going to realize it's not that, that exciting to try and win a Messi every single game week. That's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but I think most people are only going to be excited by winning the cards of players that they actually watch in real life, the ones that they see in the Premier League, the ones that they see in La Liga, in Bundesliga, Serie A, those ones, the ones that are in the news all the time. I think those are the ones that people want to win the most, and that's what I'm going to focus on. I, I just want to go ahead and get the gallery set up in a place where I feel like, okay, we are now in a spot where things, we can just go ahead and yield. That's the way to go. And yeah, I talked to Sean, PSU fans as well. Shout out to him. I initially wanted to move completely out of Super Rare and then go all in or in Rare, Champ Europe and stuff like that. But after talking to him, I kind of realized that Super Rares kind of hold their value a little bit better because instead of just one old season card, that you can play in new in-season in competitions, you get to play two. And that way you can carry on utility for your uh, for your old season cards much better. You can have two incredible smashers in Champion Europe Super Air starting next season that obviously were from the classic uh, uh like mold, I should say. And you can buy like three good super airs in Champion Europe Super Air rather than going ahead and like having to buy the best and completely overpay for the fact that they're in season, but rather get the good ones and then kind of slowly work your way into the better cards as, as time goes. So really uh, interesting perspective that I didn't really consider at all that really changed my mindset there. Uh, but yeah, that is what I've done. And uh, I don't think I've ever been this excited about so rare. I think I found myself saying that very, very often uh, throughout my time playing this game. And that's a good thing. I think excitement should be there instead of feeling like, oh my God, everything's going downhill and oh, everything is worthless. Just enjoy the freaking game. I'm thankful for Fine Ord players and for the games that I've watched, the experiences that I've had through watching their games and being able to move them on now for incredible players, an amazing goalkeeper, an amazing defender, a beast of a midfielder, and an exciting young player for the forward position for super rares that can be put into a lineup straight away, just need one extra. That's going to be great for the gallery. I'm going to be able to mix and match really well and hopefully put out some great uh, performances in the upcoming competitions. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe to uh, this channel and also sign up to Sorare Data. Link is in the description down below and use code Johnny if you can. That'd be much appreciated. Take care and peace.